Yeah, very, very, very pleased to be able to give this opportunity to speak at this, this conference. So just as sort of an overview of what I'll be talking about today, our primary focus will be our, our land base project. Um, and I'll go into that in a moment. And that was effectively the idea of, of making a, a land cover map for the, for the whole of England and then expand from there. And it should be based on our aerial photography layer. So just before I begin, why semi-automated processing? Obviously, all of us you know, have this ultimate goal of, of full automation. And, uh, and I think in certain circumstances, you know, we can achieve that. But in terms of, at the moment, for you know, wide-scale, high-resolution mapping from something like aerial photography, the technology isn't, isn't quite there. But that doesn't mean it should stop us. You know, we shouldn't constantly be in a development phase. We can actually use some manual intervention to get over some of these, these barriers and still have an operational process, uh, which is miles ahead of a, of a traditional manual approach. At Infoterra, we're part of a, um, a program called Geo Perspectives, which is uh, our partners in that are, are Blue Sky uh, Limited, also in the UK. And the aim is to have a, 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 a national layer of aerial photography and height data. So we use the, the latest generation of digital sensors, such as the ADS-40 and the uh, Vexel UltraCam. And typically, we're capturing natural color and color infrared data simultaneously. And from that, we're generating uh, DSMs and DTM data. Now, it kind of, the initial offset, it, it sounds like a dream data set to have this, this, this data stack. But there's, there's a number of limitations we have to, uh, we have to be aware of. Um, firstly, we've got multiple sensors acquiring the data. The data is being acquired across a flying season, so April to October maybe. So the seasonal vari variation is massive. And features such as the, our height data, we've got a five meter terrain model and a two meter surface model. And you know, always remember, it's not LiDAR data, it's, it's a guide. It's, it's, not, it's not good enough to classify from entirely. Luckily, over, over key urban centers, we do have one point per meter LiDAR data as well. So the idea is where, where we have this, we'll utilize as well. So just from the initial, the initial offset of testing, these are the sort of problems encountered. You know, the, the data volumes were, were pretty terrifying, really, um, initially. And you know, working at this stage, it was pretty clear that we, we needed to step up to a, to a server solution because uh, a single developer license you know, wasn't going to be effective at this wide-scale mapping. And we had to go from an initial rule set developer to expanding and having an operational service in four weeks. So we realized that you know, a change of strategy was, was required in this. So I settled on this, uh, on this generic approach. Effectively, the concept of land base is we have this map, <laughs> but it's also a map we can make other maps from. So this sort of first high resolution layer, you know, it's very, very simple. So we're almost, we're taking the L photographs and we're, we're quantifying them. And then we could, the idea is we could then use that and look at their spatial relationships, maybe integrate with some satellite data and build rules on that to take to a higher level. So one way you notice, this is the level two classification. Well, where's the level one? Actually, just to, just to show an example what the, what the classification is looking like. It's an example, um, there's Aberdovian in, uh, in Wales there. So the idea is really we're extracting pretty much everything we can see in the image down to building a tree level. Now, to add context onto that, we can look at, at three, three broad environments. You know, just simply aquatic, cultivated and built up areas, and natural and semi-natural. And we're, we're extracting these at a much broader scale and, uh, because it wouldn't make sense to extract these at higher resolution. Just to give you an example of what that looks like. And again, this is quite, it's a very contextual interpretation. And we do this largely by, by manual interpretation. Now, this is very, very quick to do because of the, the coarseness of the object, the image object levels that we, we're using. But it adds so much value to the, uh, to the higher resolution data. So in this diagram, the, the blue, blue boxes are the, the fully automated processes, and the, the purple processes are the, the semi-automated. And it was, um, 
it was, it was really, really important at this stage to help us migrate from, you know, tinkering with developer to migrating to a full server solution using action libraries and so on. It was, a, it was a, initially, it was a very daunting prospect and actually it's really not that difficult. And, you know, if we just stand back, we can process large areas. And it's really not a problem. So we're selecting an area to test our calibration parameters. So we're not ex processing over a whole area. This way we can do it very, very quickly. So first step, just defining simple vegetation mask. Very, very easy. Then we look at that vege vegetation and we're effectively extracting the heighted vegetation. And then lastly, we add the buildings onto that layer. And then we can save those as a parameter set. We can apply to a whole scene or we can send to the server and apply to a whole county. And, uh, and this is also a further step. If, for example, because again, we're, we're dealing with real world data, we had uh, a tile that we're working on, which had two acquisition blocks with significantly different data um, within that tile. We can define different parameters within a, within a work block. So these are sort of examples that we're achieving automatically. So this is off the regular data without LIDAR, and this is with the LIDAR. It's a seamless transition. If you had a scene with a LIDAR break in the middle, it, you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference. But it just the LIDAR just sharpens everything up. However, what happens when things go wrong? Which, you know, it's real data. They will happen. Invariably, our height data, although good, we're missing a number of buildings in the center of this scene because our height data is, is, is inaccurate over those places. But it's a limitation we live with. Now, rather than developing a more advanced rule set to classify the whole scene and identify these areas, we simply select, we simply select this area as, as a building error, and then we use an action library to reclassify just the area. Now, at the minute, I've used settings there which are overcooking and adding too many buildings. Let's reset, and we have something a bit more appropriate. So we're just, we're applying, it's, you know, it's a smart editing philosophy that we're reclassifying just where we think it's wrong. And we can browse up a map and say, we're wrong there, there, and there, reclassify. And typically, these recalibration parameters are quite stable. So you can use those again and again. So we have this vector network, which is derived intelligently. So, for example, we have large objects for, for playing fields and then objects approximating buildings and trees for those appropriate classes. And then we pack those with object oriented information. So, for example, we obviously have two levels of classification. We have height information. And then we have things like local cover statistics based on a, a 50 meter radius and also parent objects. So the idea is that we can use that information within a GIS to upgrade. So just as an idea, if we display the, the local building statistics, we just got this instant thematic map and we could use that information to, to build some, some higher order applications. So just a few examples of using this data. This is an example of, of taking, we have land base at the bottom with a level one classification in the bottom left and the level two classification in the bottom right. And I derived this, uh, this habitat map. It's a bit of a strange concept for, for remote sensing, but with no spectral information. Once we have the land base information, just describing our buildings, our grasses, and our trees, we use the relationships to derive this habitat map. And then uh, we had two dates of imagery. And this was actually for a client um, who wanted to map the extent of, uh, of sealed surface change in an urban environment. And um, we did that very effectively for them. So just to conclude, um, you know, the e-cognition e is, is facilitated within InfoTerra, you know, a wide variety of, of landscape analysis. And this, uh, this, this semi-automated procedure has is, is, is really, you know, it's, it's really helped us with a number of key, key issues, such as, such as data quality and, um, and you know, maybe not having time to develop a rule set as far as we like. It's, it's not stopped us. We've still been able to use the technology to effectively map wide areas. So it's, again, it's, it's, a, it's a balance between sort of rule set development and, uh, and operational timescales. Thank you very much.